Hello, my name is Fabien Gandon. I'm a research director at Inria Sofia Antipolis in the south of France. I'm in charge of the Wemix team conducting research on AI to improve web content uh, services and interactions. For this talk, I wanted to consider the idea of the convergence between very different types of complex networks. The first type of networks I wanted to mention is semantic networks. Their history could start with existential networks of peers. Then Killian in the 60s coins the notion of semantic networks to capture the memory of concept. Then come conceptual graph, KL1, and in the late 90s, semantic web and RDF. Semantic networks are networks that represent semantic relation between concepts, so the meaning of a concept is related to its position relative to the other concepts. The second type of networks I wanted to mention is computational networks. Here I mentioned the early work of McCulloch and Pitts on electrical circuits representing neural networks, then the perceptron of Rosenblatt, and the propagation algorithm, and a more recently, recurrent neuronal network. Computational networks are networks that represent operand relations between the input and output of computation nodes, and in particular, signal pathways between artificial neurons. The last type of networks I wanted to mention is the hypermedia networks, starting with the proto-hypertext system of Vannevar Bush, then the definition of hypertext and hypermedia by Ted Nelson uh, in 1965. And uh, with the advent of the internet in the 70s, the possibility of having a worldwide distributed hypermedia and the invention of the web uh, in 1989. Hypermedia networks are networks that capture links between resources of a non-linear medium of information, including text, graphics, audio, videos, and so on. And with the web, they do that across the internet. Now, you know all of that, of course, but now I believe that the advent of the web is a very special event in that history because this contributed to opting a distributed hypermedia network that has the potential of bridging all these type of networks in particular, thanks to its architecture, the linked data principle, and the semantic web framework. In other words, I believe the web has the potential of bridging all this complex network. With IRIs and the notion of the resource, the web allows us to identify on the networks anything we want, and to do so in a uniform way. So, you can identify a person, a database, a service, a protein, a policy, virtually anything, and everyone in our community is doing that. With RDF and linked data, we have the ability to weave a distributed metadata network. An example of platform leveraging this, which is very well known in uh, our community, is the SOLID platform. While decentralized, the descriptions of the things we identify remain linked by the web thanks to the linked data principle, making them accessible, findable, in other words, fair. Now, every time we find such an IRI and we dereference it, we are in fact calling a remote computation. Through these IRIs and the REST architectural style and through extensions like link uh, functions in LDescript, we are waving a decentralized computation network in the same virtual space as the linked data we just mentioned. The web is in fact linking more and more computations. These computations are linked as REST application and the HOAS principle, hypermedia, as engine of application state. And this principle ensures that a client interacts with the server entirely through the hypermedia itself. In other words, hypermedia controls give us the ability to access any type of remote computation in a uniform way. Again, with extension like link function, we can support both remote calls and mobile code, that is, code on demand, as well as remote evaluation. And many other possibilities are offered by the web now, such as the edge computing approaches, pushing selected computations to the web browser. 
Last but not least, uh, the semantic web allows us to publish link schemata. We can weave a network of the models and conceptualization ruling the data we publish. One specific category I wanted to mention for this talk are ontologies like Fairnet that allow us to model neural networks in RDF. So these ontologies and the semantic web allow us to describe anything, including named knowledge graph, neuronal network graph, embeddings, and so on, and all of these in one unified distributed RDF graph, a complex network of complex networks. This means that now, on the web, the same graph can be the input data for a service and the computation network for another. On the web, we now have knowledge graph and computational graphs and networked application captured in a linked way in one hypermedia graph opening many perspectives in terms of interoperability and decentralization. To conclude on an even longer term vision, the potential of the web goes even beyond linking all forms of network. In fact, it has the potential of linking all kinds of intelligence, natural and human intelligence of all kinds and culture, and computational intelligence of all kinds and methods. And it will only grow as we connect animals, plants, and more and more things to the network and to the web. But for this to happen, we need metadata about all the resources identified on the web. We need the semantic web, its link data and link schemata to maintain the interoperability and to provide lingua franca between all the different forms of resources connecting uh, to the web. This is why I believe the semantic web and link data are becoming a cornerstone of the next evolutions of the web. For me, this opens many research questions in terms of modeling, computing in such an heterogeneous, dynamic and distributed complex network. This future also requires a lot of development and outreach activities to make our result available to web practitioners, web developers, web users. And if you want to read more about the possible future of the web, you can check the 2020 manifesto for the web science. Thank you and see you soon on the web.